So we're down in the greenhouse today where we're currently running an experiment that's focused on some of the physiological mechanisms within the root system uh, of maize and how those mechanisms might contribute to differences in water use efficiency within this crop. So I thought this was a good opportunity to share with all of you some of the different tools and techniques that we use within our lab group uh, for studying these different topics um, and show you actually how we set up a greenhouse study and uh, how we set up a lot of the sensors that we run uh, to measure water use within plants within a greenhouse setting. So one important consideration that's often overlooked when conducting greenhouse-based studies is pot size. Now this is especially relevant in the context of conducting studies where we're interested in how different components of the root system may relate to uh, the ability to acquire water under situations of drought stress. It's well established that especially under situations of terminal drought stress, that rooting depth is positively correlated to water acquisition in those scenarios. So consequent, consequently, we don't want to be using pots that are limiting the rooting depth of the different plant varieties that we're growing. So here, for example, you can see that we utilize what we call mesocosms, essentially just PVC pipes that are 15 centimeters in diameter and about one and a half meters in uh, length. Um, so therefore, we're not really limiting the potential for rooting depth within the different varieties that we're growing. And we can really sort of relate the, relate the results we get here to how plants will acquire and utilize water in a field environment where similarly their rooting depth will not be inhibited. So as far as irrigation goes on these drought studies, we typically have uh, drip rings that are hooked on to every single mesocosm. And those drip rings are hooked into pumps that we have set to timers um, that are then put into different reservoirs of uh, irrigation water we have. And we can set those pumps to go off at whatever duration and frequency uh, that we want to irrigate our plants at. After plants have emerged, but before initiating drought stress, we top each mesocosm with approximately two centimeters of perlite to limit evaporative water loss. So here you can just see a closer look at some of the various probes and sensors that we use to track uh, water availability within the columns and total water content of these mesocosms. Uh, here you can see we have a soil capacitance probe, and we place these at various depths within the column to look at water availability in shallow regions versus deep regions and how there might be differences between different plant varieties and how they're extracting water from the soil profile at various depths. And then additionally, at the base of these columns, we have pressure plates that are tracking the total weight of the column, and therefore we can get uh, gravimetric water content of the entire column uh, overall. And that can tell us something about total water use uh, and comparing total water use between the different varieties uh, that we're growing in our greenhouse studies. So overall, we have all of these sensors hooked up to data loggers. Um, which are able to take a measurement. We have them set to take a measurement every hour, but they can be programmed to take measurements even more frequently than that if we wanted to. Um, but overall, that's how we track uh, water use within our columns uh, throughout our drought studies. To measure parameters like carbon assimilation, transpiration, stomatal conductance, and leaf temperature, we use the Lycor 6800. To get a sense of the maximum potential for these metrics across the different plant varieties we are evaluating, it is important to take these measurements on days with little cloud cover when the ambient photon flux density in the greenhouse is at least 1500 micromoles per meter square per second. We take these measurements throughout the course of the day to account for potential variation in diurnal trends in gas exchange between the different maize varieties we are looking at. When destructive sampling is carried out, plastic liners containing the growth media and intact root system are extracted from the mesocosm. These liners are subsequently cut open and roots are carefully excavated and washed for sample collection and measurement of root system depth. 